Hi, today I would like to show you how you can create a matte painting or a set extension using Nuke. This will be the final result. I'm going to copy this footage right here and I will um, review everything that I did. So if you want to load your footage, you just push the read the, the R button on your keyboard and you select your footage. Alright, so there was a little bit of noise in the footage so I decided to use a denoise but it wasn't really necessary but I just did it anyway. So if I copy this I uh, connect the source to my plate, double click on it and my parameters are down here and the uh, parameters that I used Um, I'm not very familiar with uh, with denoise node, so I just played around with the settings to see uh, if I could get a good result. All right, the next step was I uh, connected a U and correct node. Maybe I used the tab button and I just write it. Um, U correct. Here it is, and I. Um, chose the red channel because I wanted to remove this red color from the building or anywhere else so I select the red channel and I went down here you see the red color I just push this down and wait a minute I have to put the viewer on my U correct pressing 1 and you can see the difference if I disable it and enable it All right? of course not too much just a little bit going to use um, this one copy all right so this is the result we have at the moment um, don't know how to remove this maybe if I put this to one all right next game the planar node the tracker node so push that sorry and I type planar tracker. It's very easy. You just push this Bezier button. And the most important thing when you are going to use a planar tracker node to track your footage is to track texture. All right, it's very important. So don't go here and just draw something like this. Um, it won't work. All right. So you need texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this all the way down, something like this you can select also two points and just drag it maybe like this and I'm using a you can say a 2.5 tracker or a 2D tracker I don't know um, because the footage doesn't have any perspective it was shot on a uh, uh, well it was shot with the camera not moving All right, I was just panning to, to the right so something like this is pretty pretty good and it doesn't matter if your points are outside of the footage um, it's a planar tracker node so it, it, it tracks texture and not points so it doesn't matter and the next thing you have to do, is, to do is just push this button or you can push this one and you can say how how long you want to track and that's it once you're done with tracking you can go to the tracking tab and don't forget to select your layer and just push create button and it will spit out a solution for you so if I go here um, let me see I'm gonna select these two it will give me this one alright this corner pin 2D and with this one I can put anything that I want and it will stick to it as you can see here you can see the green line that means that they are linked together and then this is the corner pin and here is my matte painting or it's just a picture in my case alright so we tracked the footage and uh, I'm gonna put my viewer here or here doesn't matter here. And you can see that uh, it gives me four points alright so if I select my uh, my backgrounds or my matte painting sorry copy paste and uh, alright 
I'm just going to put a temporary transform node just to uh, scale it down. Uh, bear with me. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Then I'm going to put a merge node, and I'm going to link it with the background. Here you go. Let me just delete this. So I added a um, transform node so that I can transform it just for now, and a merge node with um, the matte painting as the foreground at the moment and um, the plate as the background. And this way I can just test my. Uh, track if it's tracking all right. Usually I just select my node and I go to render and I say flip, flipbook selected and I say use proxy and the frames that I want and I say OK and it will give me a preview. OK, so this is what we have at the moment. OK, so we track the footage. What's next? Um, if you go back to this node here, the rotor node, you see that we still have the sky, so I cannot put anything behind it. We have to remove the sky. How do we do it? Well, we use a luma key. So if I select my roto, tab, uh, luma key, sorry, key here. All right. Downstairs are the parameters, and if I move these these two guys here, nothing happens because I'm still on RGB. If I put on the alpha, you see that things are starting to change. All right. So at this point, white is uh, you can say maybe uh, one, and black is zero. So black is going to um, be opaque, and black is going to be transparent. I would like to have the inverse, so I click invert, and this is what is the solution at the moment. Um, the thing, the key to sell it to match the, the the foreground with the background is the fog. All right, I don't know if you remember. If I click here, I'm going to put back to RGB. You see that there is a fog layer. So how can you do it? It's very easy. Um, you just go back to the alpha channel and you just create something like this so this gradient here is going to be our fog layer and it's going to work very good and it's going to blend with the matte painting the matte painting um, oh sorry RGB already has a little bit of fog so this, the choice to get this picture um, works very well so you need to consider this back to the luma key uh, I think the shortcut is A, yeah. So this is what we have. The problem is there are a few holes in the alpha channel and we don't want that because these holes we will see the background. So what I did is I created a roto paint. Roto paint. And I just created a um, a shape like this. And I set some keyframes making sure that my holes are completely filled. Um, what is very important is that you choose the output as alpha because we don't want it to become a solid color, right? We want it to be part of the alpha. That's why I choose alpha. Once you did that, um, I go back to the RGB channel. The thing is that we still don't have a transparent layer we need something to create that so the fastest way that I know is a pre-mold if you put a pre-mold underneath it you see that you start to get your transparent area and if you start merging this this is what you get um, as you can see but there are a few problems I, I always have this problem I don't know what it is uh, I don't know if it's just a mistake of nuke but the way that I solve this problem is first of all I need to put a reformat node here so that I can um, have the same format 
as the original uh, as my plate uh, so I resize it to HD uh, and then let me see if I'm doing it correctly so reformat uh, transform is for later the merge let me see here over and union BMB this is the same yeah it's the same okay okay so as you can see the matte painting is not completely as I want it to be so I'm going to put a transform node underneath it and now I can start moving it wherever I want I can scale it, I can make it more uh, bigger and once you're happy with it you can start checking your plate again and making sure that it completes the entire um, matte painting uh, the entire canvas ideally what you can do is you can render out a few frames of the original footage let's say frame 0 frame 50 and 100 and you combine them in Photoshop then you have one big panorama and on that panorama you can create your man painting that, that way you will always be safe that um, it will work alright so what's the next step that I did I used another U correct to remove the reddish tint from the matte painting right uh, then let's see let me see if the pre-mold is the same RGB RGBA that's working okay the roto paint alpha none okay all right um, let me see the cure because I'm not getting a very good um, uh, result all right now it's a lot better you see that you remove the fog and you start adding the fog which really sells it okay um, I'm doing it rather quickly now because uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it okay so we move the, the reddish tint then I did a, a grade let me just put it here okay you can see that with the grade I made the fog a little bit intenser um, by raising the multiply and also the gamma uh, I have to put back my viewer here so you can see gamma it really helps okay next to that um, We're almost at the end. So I added a new merge node with a reformat and this plate here. The plate is a um, noise or a grain footage. I did a reformat so that the footage is HD and I merged it with a multiply operation. Alright. Then as a final step I reformat the whole uh, the whole uh, work working area so that everything is HD and then I added a last color correct node just for stylish purposes um, I played with uh, let me see here the master channel the gain I uh, removed a little bit of reddish color and um, yeah to get a little bit more blue and that's the only thing that I did all right this is part one part two we will cover maybe uh, some destruction elements in the matte painting it's not really a matte painting it's just a picture I took but I would like to destroy some buildings and maybe add some uh, some smoke